to and also Pepia Swinburne. And also, again, thank you to Aya for this collaboration with Papua Victoria so this event could happen. Hopefully, there will be more collaborations in the future. And yeah, lastly, I'd like to thank the attendees for coming. And I hope we can all learn something today from this exciting talk given by Kavanessa about a unique and important part of Indonesia's culture that is Jamu. And um, so without further ado, I'd just like to hand it over to Dr. Sharon Davis to introduce our guest speaker for today. I did it again, talking to myself, my off. <laughs> They're very noisy, my kids. I try to blot them out as much as I can. Slum up my lungs and work. My name is Sharon Graham Davies, and I'm speaking to you tonight from the unceded lands of the Kulin Nation. And I pay my respects to elders past, emerging, uh, and present. I'm the director of the Herb Feed Centre here at Monash University, and it's so exciting to be involved in uh, this event tonight and the one for Lily the night before. And I couldn't attend Paul's uh, on the previous night because I was giving a lecture to Erlanga. Um, so lots of, lots of things happening in the Indonesia space, which is super, super exciting. And I'm really excited about tonight. My, my really most vivid memory of landing in Indonesia, other than the heat and the smell, I came from Tasmania straight to, to Indonesia was waking up and my host mum giving me some jamu, which I just was not prepared for, but it has stuck with me forever. So it holds a special, special place uh, in my heart. So I'm really super excited about the talk tonight. Um, and without further ado, I can probably hand over to Vanessa, who's going to take us on a fascinating journey. So thanks, Vanessa. Hi, everyone. Thank you so much for the introduction, Dr. Sharon, um, everybody here from PPIA, uh, Victoria and Aya, and also Sasha for organizing this. Um, it's um, when she reached out, I was just a little bit, oh, you know, I, I, I don't know much about um, Australia, although I sent, I mean, I spent a year in Sydney, but um, I don't know much about like the, the, the connection we have between Indonesia and Australia that we're very close. Um, let me share my screen um see here can anyone everybody see this mm -hmm. yes all right okay so i'm going to take everybody here into the um the very secret and magical journey of jamu i mean most people when they hear the word jamu it's very bitter it's smelly it's only for old people you know they don't drink it anymore but apparently we don't like when you go back to history um it is actually the drink of the um, the kings or the para raja 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 zaman dulu um let me begin with sharing with the word itself jamu you know what what is jamu not many people know that it is an actually an abbreviation it is uh, short for jampi jampi which means mantra or prayer and husodo in javanese and husada in balinese uh, so when you go to Bali, you know, you see Pirta Husada, this Husada, it means health. So back in the days, it is it's a prayer of good health. Um, you know, Indonesia is a very mystical uh, country. And in the Javanese, they do believe in a lot of prayer and health back then. Uh, that we still do. So um, as you can see here, the origins is, is quite tricky. Um, you know, I've talked to certain librarians here that they, they do keep all these... Um, what we call them like the small little Bibles made from lontar or pelepah pisang, and they have Sanskrit written on it. Um, uh, the origins is 1300 BC from the Mataram kingdom. And um, this, is, this has been part of their culture because um, back in the days, you know, when you want to look for uh, certain uh, medications, you look, in, you look through the nature, you look in nature. Actually, nature has, uh, nature has provided everything for us, actually. So back in the days, uh, they know exactly where to find ailments for the kings and the queens when they were sick. Um, so back in the days, only the kings um, and the invited royalties drink jamu. It is actually the king's elixir. Um, the man or the woman who concoct those beverages are called acharaki. 
So the acharaki, uh, they are the trusted people to concoct, you know, leaves, flowers, barks, roots, whatever they could find. And they have like this Bible, this holy Bible, where they where they write all the botanical ingredients for certain ailments. And back in the days of obviously there were no paracetamols, you know, uh, there were no quick instant remedies to to cure your uh, headaches or your stomach pain. So jamu was actually to be drank gradually, even if you when you're not feeling. I mean, even when you're healthy, you still have to drink it. So it, it it's not like an instant remedy. It is a process. Um, just like how life is, you go through the whole pain, the whole journey. It is every day. It's like a daily drink, uh, but daily elixir. Um, and it's it's written here in the Chandi Borobudur. I'm sure most of you have heard Borobudur and have probably gone through Borobudur. Uh, in the reliefs, when you, I think it's on the third or the fourth um, stupa, the, the fourth stair. When I was there, uh, I was like looking at, you know, where is this? They say it's it's here. So I kept looking and looking, and there were actually these these small these little men, and they do serve jamu. I mean, it it it, it might not look a lot, but it, it is a sign that these even the jamu cups, the lumpang alu, the pestle and mortar were there, and um, it is part of a tradition. It is part of their holistic energy, their healing, and their uh, ritual, you know, to 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 the kings, and then uh, also uh, maintaining health to themselves uh, for for your own body, because uh, jamu is a holistic healing. It is the mind, body, and spirit, uh, and people disregard that throughout generations. Whether you actually, when you dig down deeper, it is much richer in history. It is much more than just a drink. It is a an elixir, as if you're drinking a cup of uh, history. You know, when you when you serve jamu, it is part of the culture. As you can see in the reliefs here, um, uh, it is it's very very beautiful, um, and I, I think it's quite self-explanatory here. Yeah. Um, and this is actually not many people know about this. So this is another secret that I'm telling everybody here in PPIA. Um, as in India, they have the Ayurvedic system. You have the doshas. You have the pita kapha. Whereas in Indonesia, we have this. Um, this book called Srachantini. It is similar to Ayurvedic system. And the Ayurveda has like four different major books, the Vedas. Uh, the Srachantini has more than 10 to 12 books, mostly about uh, spirit heal healing herbs. And um, it's basically, oh, sorry. It's basically written, you know, all the, the secret recipes. I wouldn't say secret, but basically some of the plants are not, are extinct and you can't really find them anymore in Indonesia because uh, the farmers uh, and then the education, you know, throughout generation, they haven't been really maintained throughout generation. So they lose the, the knowledge to how to, how to plant properly, how to fertilize it, how to um, uh, grow in certain weathers. Also climate change plays a big part. You can't really find certain uh, plants like alang alang. It's very hard uh, also for stamina and energy. Uh, it is also back i mean back in the days jamu were mostly used for vitality um so it's called srachantini um or sarat suluk tambang laras it, it was written about 1814 masehi or 7th century and this is the earliest evidence that we can find who actually recorded all the jamu secret recipes back then uh, so it's uh, it's 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 not as um as easy as you know it's uh back then even though we they never had a rnd lab you know there's no like high-tech equipment they do have their own uh um what would you call it uh, not a wizard but um uh not a magician either but uh, we call it not not a dukun either so it's like more like a medicine man <laughs> because jam was always kind of associated with dukun because of its magical properties or the mantras that they say but it's all misconcept uh, the misconceptions that they have um, so basically, the the real uh, the real not founder, but the real origins were from the Kanjeng Gusti Pangeran, and um, who is the son of Sunan Pakubuwono, and he reigned he reigned as Sunan Pakubuwono V. And this the book of Srachantini consists not just herbs, but Primbon Jawa metho mythology, philosophy, astrology, and also herbalism. Very very similar to Ayurvedic and the the book of the Vedas. Um, 
and you can find them. I mean, you can actually go to Yogyakarta and actually there's a library uh, at Puro Paku Alaman, Jogja, and you can actually find the scriptures. Uh, maybe, um, and uh, hopefully they, they can translate it for you because it is in um, Aksara Jawa. Uh, unless you, you do, you actually, I'm sure uh, Australia has Aksara Jawa lessons, I'm not sure, but um, it, it's a, actually, it's a very interesting journey when you, you look through all this. Um, and dur in, during the, in those pages, they have uh, remedies like breast kencur, loloh. Loloh is a type of uh, jamu in, um, in, in Bali. And param. Param is uh, something that you use on the forehead, and uh, especially after giving birth. Um, and mostly soothing remedies for elders and children. Um, this is a short video of Jokowi drinking jamu. Uh, I don't know if we have time, but um, there's a link at the, at, in here, but I just want to show you, basically it's his uh, morning, morning ritual and video will show you what he drinks. And luckily this is the, the recipe that I'm going to share with you at the end of the, of the presentation. You're going to be drinking Jokowi's drink <laughs> um, just a short uh, introduction about um, back, uh, throughout the 1900s. So after the Mataram comes the 1900s, uh, Nyonya Munir is one of the first ladies to make her own jamu in packets, in sachets. So it's in powder form. Why in powder instead of, um, instead of liquid like the one I have in my background? Because it's um, less contaminated less easily contaminated if it's in water liquid form. So her name is Nyonya Manir. She was born in Sidoarjo, East Java, 1895. She founded uh, the Jamu Chaporta Nyonya Manir, which became the largest uh, jamu makers in Indonesia. Um, she makes, she recruited 1400 women at that time. And at the time she just handpicked her own workers to actually uh, uh, plant jamu, to manufacture jamu from, from the beginning to the packaging. Um, she was also um, here, as you can see on the, on the stamp at one point in 2004. Um, there you can see the ladies. It was mostly, I, I would say a mix of women and female empowerment back in the days, even though it wasn't big right now, but I think she had a clear vision that she wanted all her workers, even her security guards to be women. Uh, and basically just to empower them with, with jobs and with a uh, better economy. Okay, so I think we've come to the point where the exciting part comes. This is the, the ingredients that you might have in your kitchen, or maybe later on if you see this video, you can prepare some cane sugar or stevia, um, tamarind, which I know might be hard to find in Australia, but it is, uh, it's, you can skip that if you don't want to, it's also okay. Uh, turmeric powder, uh, powder form is probably much easier. Ginger and lemon, which uh, ginger could be uh, heat tea for some for some some people, so it's optional. Uh, so the remedy, the jamu remedy here that I'm going to share with you is kunyit asam. But if there's no asam, so it's just kunyit jahe <laughs> or just kunyit drink, uh, kunyit jamu kunyit. Um, and these are the materials that you would need, which is uh, sieve boiling water, a pestle mortar, wood is best to retain its, um, its flavor, and a kettle must be made from clay because if it's aluminum or if it's like stainless steel, the, the metallic uh, react, uh, reaction would actually have a, have a bad chemical reaction with the, with, the, with the ingredients. So if possible, uh, you could use the clay pot. And I think I would pass to Jesse uh, for the video. Yeah, I'll play the tutorial first. Um, yeah, just give me a sec. Um, okay, I'm gonna share my screen. And here we go. Yeah, uh, so this is, as you can see, this is a harder way where you have to cut and chop everything from scratch. The turmeric, as you can see here, you put it in the pestle mortar and you just grind them as, as much as possible and as, as uh, uh, like spread out as possible. Uh, you can mix either uh, the kunyit, the turmeric or the ginger together or separate, um, it's up to you. And then once it's all clear, 
you can actually um oh here i'm preparing the more of the ginger powder is optional a powder is actually a good substitute as well if you don't have time and then if you're in, in a hurry powder will, is always best to to be mixed uh with boiling water um here's just a a showcase of how i'm mixing everything i know i can't imagine back in the days they have so much time probably so they can um make it they they can make it with like so much patience <laughs> You can actually leave the skin on. Um, you don't have to cut the whole skin. The, 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 you have to skin it out. I think there's a question there. So, and then you put in um, about a liter of water. Either uh, it's supposed to be boiling, and um, after you set it for about ten minutes or so, you you sieve it. Um, uh, if you don't like the the residue in it, so you can just drink and pour it and then um, enjoy it while it's hot or you can just put ice in it during hot weather. Um, and that's pretty much it. Uh, there's not much remedy, I mean, not much a technicality to it, but you do have to um, say uh, powder and fresh, uh, fresh ingredients, they have the same benefits. So basically if you use either or, it would be the same benefit. It, it doesn't uh, have any a gradual effect um okay and um, did you want to go share your PowerPoint oh again? yeah uh, um let me go to back to my screen um yeah so um i recently launched a book uh which has 15 recipes in it and you can do it at home and if everything from um let's see from the things that you can drink at home and then also for say like a traditional hair mask and traditional face mask the mask that they used back when the princesses of java were using um these are like some of the new modern packaging of jamu so it's not you know smelly senile or oh uh, vanessa uh, you're not sharing your screen could you share that oh again? Yeah. sorry uh let's see here share screen Is this oh, okay? Yeah, so basically, there's um, I just launched a, a book about um, recipes about traditional jumbo recipes that are very friendly and easy to use at home. This would include hair masks, face masks, back when the princesses of Java were, were, were working on or were, were still uh, mm -hmm. alive. And um, basically, they, you know, the jamu is not just internal, but it's also outer beauty. Back then, the king used to have, you know, 15 mistresses or 15 wives. So they do have to maintain their beauty uh, to compete with the other wives and the other mistresses. So they do have to take jamu into consideration to maintain their beauty and health. And some of the recipes are in this book. Um, and basically it's 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 been researched and thorough from with the, with the, some of my uh my r and d uh, uh, uh positions um and some of the uh the jamu now has actually new branding uh since the covid started back last year uh jamu has been uh, used to has been promoted a lot by the ministry of health here you know they say to consume whatever in, in your around your area plant some turmeric in your garden plant some ginger you know have your own home garden where you can actually uh because uh nature i mean the plants they absorb energy from the light and we are human beings too the the plants are living beings so um whatever that nature has provided it it's all around us actually so um that's pretty this is also some of the packagings that they have uh some of my products too actually but uh some of the olden recipes from my great grandmother um to be included in um you know part of the modern life millennial lifestyle right away um yeah and this is some of um uh the context uh for what we do now for my part um and i think i would close the presentation with a video of Jamal workshop uh, from Jesse. Yep, I'll just share that now. Um, I'll just sorry, share my screen again. I need to share sound. Yep. And let me know if you can hear it.
Yep. I think that's it for me. If there's any questions. Thank you so much for having me. Um, if there's any questions, I'm open to any question and answer. I think there's a lot of questions, Vanessa. Oh. <laughs> and I'm not going to I actually have fresh tamarind and fresh ginger and fresh. Oh. Um, um, what's the orange one? The the turmeric. The turmeric. Okay. I have it all downstairs. I'm I'm just oh. going to run off. So as soon as we're done, that's where I'm going. Right. <laughs> it looks much more delicious than that very first experience I had, which had something that was. Uh, <laughs> Did you buy it from the um the ladies? You know, with the back. You know, with the with the back. Oh, that's 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 beautiful. Yeah, that's, I think looking that. back, my host mum probably you know it was my first day. I think she was actually quite mean, and she ordered the worst tasting one, so the whole oh. would just laugh at my oh, reaction. In, in fact, the bitter is the better because <laughs> the, the bitter is the best because it, it you feel the the um the power and then the the, the uh -huh. right yeah. So <laughs> you got the best one. So. <laughs> Yeah, I'll think of it that way. She was getting me the best one. Uh, let me jump back out because there's been lots of questions um, um, popping through. It's our first one from Felicia. Um, what made you deeply interested in Jamul? She was born and raised in Indonesia and exposed to Jamul a lot, but I avoided it as a kid because I thought it was poison. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> oh, oh, oh God. How did you oh. get into this? So did you did you guys remember the lady that I showed you on the slideshow, Nyonya Manir? Uh, yeah, so apparently she's not apparently, but she she's actually my great grandmother. No. So, <laughs> so I don't really I have much with choice. That line. <laughs> I don't have much choice, you know. So like it's like in the family I grew up with it, you know. I kind of like I, I used to grow up with the ladies, the mbok mbok jamu, and then the, the we call them the farmers too, the petani petani ampon. Mm -hmm. I basically had like they're pretty much like I played with them when I was a kid, so I didn't know what was going on at that time. So but as I grew up, I understood better, and I was just learning more, and I was just okay. Now I get it, and um, it's pretty much become it became my world, you know, uh, throughout the years. I had I. Uh, I can't escape it. There is no way to escape it. In a way, I tried, but it always comes back around. It's always calling me back to like come back to the job world, you know. Mm -hmm. So um, that's how I got into this job world, and um, I'm quite enjoying it, you know. So <laughs> oh, that's brilliant because she was amazing, right? Like so empowering for women and giving women space and economic autonomy. So that's that. <laughs> Um, okay, let's jump. Yeah, so Tamara, we get we can we can uh, get here even in our local supermarket in a jar, which is great. Can we substitute cane sugar with raw sugar or brown sugar? Yes, absolutely. Uh, especially for I think diabetic, um, uh, palm sugar would be great. Um, the thing about sugar is also misunderstood. Back in the days, they they take cane sugar like they take sugar from cane sugar whereas right now we have processed sugar you know high, high fructose corn syrup which makes it really bad sugar but um according to a lot of my nutritionists uh, researchers you know uh cane sugar as long as it's fresh and not processed um it, it should be fine mm -hmm. great the next one is uh you're not using a chobek is that greater so you're, you're pounding it not great uh, is, yeah. is that greater Chobek, no. oh, chobek is for the sambal. Oh. Yeah, you can use that too. Uh, the chobek is usually made from stone, like really heavy. And then uh, I, I'm not sure how comfortable you are with like sitting on the floor because that's how the mbo, mbo do it. They use the chobek and then they sit on the floor and then they just pound it. Uh, you can use that too, you know, if that works. But but the wood is more, um, uh, the wood just retains the flavor of the, because of the, 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 uh, the contact that they have with the ingredients. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Mm. But easily works. Yeah. And we can leave the skin on. Yes, you can leave the skin on. Um, yeah, as long as it's washed previously. Yeah. So yeah, yeah. yeah. Okay. And any animal products in Jamal? Animal products. Mm. Um, no, um. Okay. Well. So. Uh, <laughs> no. 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 Yes, uh, no uh, <laughs> But uh, no, we, we try to avoid as much, you know, harm to animals as possible. You know, I mean, I've, I've heard of people using turtles as minyak, as their to, to squeeze the oil out of the turtles for breast enhancing, which I feel that's really wrong and uh, not ethically correct. 
and also seahorses. Some um, old Jammu factories use seahorses for mm -hmm. male enhancers. And, uh, and then they, they basically dry the seahorses and they crush them to powder. So I thought that was very, um, uh, just not ethical. Mm -hmm. So we, we try to avoid that as much as possible. Mm -hmm. um, where can we get your book in Australia? You might have showed it on the last slide, but but oh, get in another plug. <laughs> I, <laughs> I will pass the contact to Sasha. It will be uh, on the website, and then uh, I think Sasha would would help with that. If yeah, it will, it's both in Indonesian and English, so uh, we can make remedies at home. Yeah. Um. Do you know if we can get Jamal Bar products the Australia? The Australia. Uh, we actually sent to Australia, but because of this pandemic, I don't think we're allowed to send to Australia. That's the last time I checked, and I mm -hmm. they can't send things out from Australia either. I, I feel you have to come to Australia. Indonesia. That's okay. We can, <laughs> we can do that soon, yeah. hopefully. Um, if we're using the tamarind puree, so like in a jar, mm -hmm. any suggestions on how much to use? Um, so if you're making like one pot of of, of uh, just a cup of tea, a cup of pot free, just a normal regular, just use a uh, two two teaspoons would be enough because it's very sour. Uh, and then unless you and kunyit, uh, I mean kunyit asam. So kunyit mixed with asam actually was used by the princesses back then to slim their waist, actually to detox their their and burn their fat away because asam has that property. Uh, but if you don't like asam because you have mah, mah is ulcer, I think it's called ulcer or gerd, I think you should avoid it and just take kunyit and um, lemon, oh, I'm sorry, kunyit and jahe after uh, your first meal of the day. Mm -hmm. Nice. Uh, and what do you think is the biggest challenge in, in marketing or promoting jamu? The, oh, right. Uh, well, no, well, actually, I when I first got back from the US and I opened my, I started my own cafe, I started my Jammu Cafe in 2010. Uh, it did not, was not received very well. Obviously everybody was telling me, why would you do this? You know, it's so smelly and disgusting. It's, it's only for old people. Why are you opening this? You're still only penny. I'm like, well, I, he, I, I don't really have a, you know, I just want to experiment, right? Um, and then, you know, I tried several times opening different cafes. And then the last one is what we have here called the Jammu Bar. And um, it's mostly education. Without education, people, you know, kids like us or like younger than we are, they, they, will, they will look down at it. You know, they don't really know their history. They don't know Indonesia's history. So I think the challenge, the biggest challenge is education and, um, and getting to know your own national drink. You know, like, you know, you can drink coffee and tea anytime, but Jamu is like, it's your own, only Indonesia has it. So I think we, we just have to embrace it as Indonesians or even as just health lovers. Uh, yeah, I think that's, that's one of the biggest challenges. Mm -mm -mm. <laughs> <laughs> Joe Bacon, uh, uh, vegan friendly, good, good, good thing there. Uh, what's your opinion of coffee from a Jamu perspective? Is, the, is Jamu an alternative for coffee? Um, the thing about coffee, we actually do make coffee mixed with jamu, mm -hmm. so we call it STMJ, susu telur madu jahe, with coffee. Mm -hmm. um, coffee has an addictive property, is caffeine, you know, um, and you only drink it when you need it. Whereas jamu, you have to drink it every day, you know, as part of a ritual, even a shot, like in my, my background, just a small, about 30 milli, you know, it'll be fine every morning. Uh, we at our jamu bar we sell jamu shots after um, after for jet lag. So those were jet lag. We just give them the bitter jamu shots that Dr. Sharon probably tasted, you know, back in, in Jakarta. Uh, so just to wake them up, you know. Um, and the better it is, the better because it would have a strong reaction after you you're feeling sleepy or whatnot. The bitterness will wake you up. Mm, nice. And there's not, there's not like a bubbly, like a, a, a soda version, no alcoholic versions. It's just, oh, you are healthy, isn't it? Oh, we have mocktails. We do have mocktails. We have Jamal mocktails. Uh, yeah, it's a Nastar mocktail, you know, we have flamingo mocktails, but we mix it. We have a Jamalogist, we call her. So she mixes in the bar. Uh, it's all, it's all hundred percent halal no no alcohol we just use soda water and tonic water yeah. um but we just try to make it as 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 
appealing as possible. Yeah, yeah, yeah. and healthy to boot. Um, and it's healthy, yeah. What is your favorite jamu recipe, Vanessa? <laughs> oh my. my favorite jamu recipe would be the one that my great grandmother made when she was still around back then. It's called Sehat Wanita. Mm -hmm. uh, inside is a sachet of about 30 different, um, 30 different herbs. And um, I still don't know if they have it anymore because it is so bitter. But because when I was growing up, uh, you know, the, like puberty and everything, um, I had to drink that. It's like a ritual. You have to drink that for two weeks straight. It's not my favorite, but <laughs> it really helps you. Oh, yeah, it was, it was, yeah. So uh, it was an experience, you know, I was only like 14 and I still had to drink that for two weeks. It was it was challenging, but you know, you feel the benefits like afterwards. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> uh, we've got two questions here on weight loss. What is the best type of jamu for weight loss? <laughs> oh, oh. <laughs> kunyat asam is good, especially uh, when you're having, um, say, like a premenstruation menstruation uh, for women. That's a that's a good thing, to, good uh, drink to to consume. Mm -hmm. And uh, for weight loss, you can actually increase the asam more than the kunyat. So the asam would help um, help burn the fat away. Um, we also have galian singsat. Uh, I guess you guys have to come to Jakarta one day or somewhere in Indonesia to experience galian singsat. Singsat is like singsat um, slim. <laughs> um, uh, and also there is a leaf called um, uh, daun sena. So it's a uh, S E N A. But it would make you would have to make you you would have to go to the loo like quite often, uh, so you might get dehydrated. So after that, you have to take a lot of like water for them. Yeah. Uh, now in the Australian market, um, Jeffrey's encountered jamu with black pepper. What's your thoughts on that? What's your opinion on that? Actually, black pepper is added to increase the absorption of turmeric in your gut. Yeah. So black pepper, yes, you can add black pepper and actually milk. So turmeric latte, we do sell turmeric latte. The Indians actually, I mean, some of my friends are Indians and they told me that uh, you have to add milk to um, activate the ingredients in turmeric as well and then add black pepper so that the absorption would be complete. Mm. And what are some of the more unusual ingredients used uh, in Jammu? Um, gosh, unusual ingredients. Um, let's check. I, I mean, I tried, okay, my first discovery was bunga telang. It was the purple, it's the blue pea flower. Now everybody knows what blue pea flower, blue pea flower is, the butterfly pea. The one that when you uh, put boiling water and it turns blue, and then if you put like lemon, it turns purple. Oh, uh, yes, yeah, so I discovered that a few years ago. I didn't know it was going to become a trend. So it was, it was like, ooh, it was quite fun to drink it, but it's actually to wash your eyes. So for example, if you have like some eye infection, you just uh, mm -hmm. use the cup and then just uh, like put your eye in the cup and then just wash it with the water. So it was, it was, I, I actually drank it. I didn't know. So, um, and then, <laughs> um, and then it was actually for your eyes. So, mm -hmm. um, yeah, other than that, I, Maybe back then when I was in still, I was still interning in my great grandma's factory. I would experiment with all sorts of like uh, weird smelling, you know, all these like different barks and leaves. It's just, uh, yeah, it was very bitter and very smelly. Uh, I didn't, yeah. So um, it was just me experimenting. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Now, is there an anti-aging jamu? anti-aging but i thought we're supposed to age gracefully why do you want to go look at 70 we're supposed to um anti-aging jamu the secret is to drink jamu um every day just for a short uh very sh uh, like a shot just a small cup if you drink it every day until you're 70 years old your skin will be so tough as in like not tough but tight taut and then you will look so, your figure would be just in shape because this has happened to mom, my mom's friends. They've been jumbo drinkers since they were 17. And up to, up to the, till their 70s now, they still look so fresh, so amazing, like very, very, the, they don't even need um, a lot of Botox or energy or, or surgery. 
But the key to this is just discipline. It's just drinking it every day without fail, um, just bit by bit. And then you would feel the benefit later on when you age. So it's part of like a lifestyle. It is part of a holistic system uh, where you do this constantly, uh, just like when you do exercise every day or every other day, it has mm -hmm. to be constant. So that's the Jammu way of anti-aging. Uh -huh. Yep. Uh, so why do you think Jammu has survived and endured for so many years in Indonesia? Do you think there's something that traditional medicines and remedies like Jammu can offer the modern Western, um, Western medicine that, that it doesn't have? Mm, I mean, if I look back through history, um, you know, like the Japanese have their own have their own system of hol holistic healing. Uh, the Chinese have their own way. The TCM India has Ayurvedic. It's just it's about time that Indonesia is a sleeping giant. Nobody has really tapped into it, even though we're the Jamo producers. But mm -hmm. if we don't open the eyes of like our new generation, like hey, you know, Indonesia is also has a system. Um, you know, we're slowly getting there, but it's been that it's been like our struggle for the past hundred years i think you know it's um i mean it's easier to to talk about jamu with the villagers and with the mba -mba, mbo -mbo yang, you know the kampung halaman they would love it they would drink jamu often mm -hmm. but if i talk to my age and like say the millennials or the gen z it would take another leap of like a leap of faith a leap of um this whole education of like jamu world what is it from a to z um and it's a constant process of survive not survival but just reliving the history reliving the moment and then sharing these kind of stories like uh my sister and i we had to use tiktok and then to to promote jamu i i don't even i don't even know how to use tiktok so i just asked my sister to do it it's like is that that kind of um merging between the old and the new so it's part of like a synergy uh and it will always keep on going i think so um yeah Mm. Oh, they've been awesome questions. They've been like there must have been twenty questions that we've fired at you like that that you've oh. answered superbly. Um, we had a few more minutes. If there were any final questions for Vanessa, here we go. Are there any? Uh, are there many Indonesians using Jamal for protection against COVID nineteen? Oh yeah, Indonesians are they are they went crazy on Jamal after after last year. They were like they would be drinking eucalyptus oil. Even though it was not recommended, you know, it's, it's, it was just like, please drink eucalyptus oil, but please do not drink eucalyptus oil. It will burn your throat. So, um, so just, you just use it on your skin as a topical, topical oil, but you do not drink it. Um, so the, the one that they actually uh, promote for uh, fighting against uh, COVID-19 is Mpon Mpon. So Mpon Mpon is a type of leaves uh, and then you mix it with uh, turmeric and ginger. And that would give like a boost of um, immodulator to basically to just um, boost your immunity, boost your immune system so that even if you go to crowds or whatever, it's it's fine. Because Jamu is not, it's preventive. It's not cur curative. It is only to, for prevention. Uh, so it's very important to note that basically when you're sick, you can't just drink Jamu and expect to like, you know, get healed right away. Um, it is just for prevention. So if, once you get COVID, that you that is like another level where you have to go urgently go to a doctor and be treated specifically for that yeah yeah <laughs> i mean they're all just such good things for you to start your morning off with a little shot of ginger and turmeric and bit. honey and yeah tamarind just sounds delicious and good for you and good for you to boot. yeah yeah it's fresh fresh and natural Mm, you know? mm, mm. These are really tough questions. I don't know. <laughs> it's, it's, been like a a while since, it's been a while since I was a student, so I don't know. I was a bit nervous. It's like you know, <laughs> students usually have like the most like you know boom 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 questions. So I was like, I don't know. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Well, sometimes I don't have any, but you know, this has obviously piqued everybody's everybody's interest. And we've just uh, got one more here. Uh, what jamu mix do you drink every day, Vanessa? Oh, no. assuming you do, of course. We are assuming you do. <laughs> yeah, yeah. I just mixed. Um, I just mixed turmeric with orange juice, like the local orange here, because I like the local oranges here. They're quite sweet. Um, and I just mix them both. 
uh, and I just take a shot every morning. It's not too, because I just sometimes in the morning I have to like kind of rush. And then if I'm late for work or whatever, then I just whip something quick uh, mm -hmm. the night before. Actually, I actually make a whole litter before uh, for like one or two weeks. Mm -hmm. And then I store it in the fridge. So I just take like a small bite, small bits every, every day. Mm -hmm. and Vegemite. Oh, I've tasted oh. Vegemite, so it's uh, not really my thing. But I mean, it's 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 healthy, right? <laughs> uh, yeah, I, I, I get yeah, Vegemite is. Oh no no no! Maybe that'll have a maybe that'll have a revival. Now I know we're very keen for the photo. Um, so unless there are any um, final questions, we might go to the um, to the photo part. But it's been such an interesting talk. Like I had no idea about this history of Jamu and you know your super empowering great grandmother who's just awesome. I'm going to do more reading about that, and I'm really inspired. Literally, I am going to go now and make my. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> a little drink. Um, so yeah, I think if there's no more questions, we might do the um, the photo. I don't is that Jesse? You're... Yep, I'll take the photo. Um, Get us all in. Can everyone um, turn on the cameras if you feel comfortable? And if you don't feel comfortable, that's perfectly fine. Give everyone um, about a minute or a couple of seconds. Oh wow! Everybody's got their jamu. I, I will just actually take my cup here because I was drinking jamu. <laughs> Anyone else? Look at that cup. Oh, I hope you can see this. Okay, well, never mind. <laughs> All right, I might get started. Okay, I'll count down from three. Okay, three, two, one. There you go. Um, and I'll take one more. All right. Um, right. Okay. Three, two, one. Uh, cool. Okay. Let's take it now. We're all good. Excellent. Oh, well, thank you so much, Vanessa. It's been such an interesting talk, and I think we've all enjoyed yeah. it. Just looking through all of those questions, everyone. I, I really it. hope it was educational enough because really, I I I don't really I I feel this way my first time giving a, a talk to universities. I mean, to to you know students. So I was really really like preparing materials, like you know back then when I was a student. <laughs> so yeah. Well, I, I, it. I think it's all a big thumbs up from us and a, and a big round of applause. So. So thank you very much for making time to join us today. And thank you, everybody. Um, I don't know if Jeffrey or, or Jesse wanted to have a final word. And then, uh, right. Thank you, everyone, for joining today's workshop. Uh, right, so that will actually, unfortunately, conclude um, our, uh, our event for this week. And then, yeah, once again, I would like to thank uh, uh, Vanessa, Vanessa and uh, Sharon for um, sharing with us and moderating. And again, I would like to thank Aya for collaborating with uh, Pepe Ya Victoria. Hopefully we'll have another event soon. And yeah, hopefully you've enjoyed Jamu. Hopefully you'll start uh, making your own Jamu. Right, <laughs> so usually if I were to be in Australia, I'll be like drinking Jamu like around about June or July. I remember the first time being in Australia during winter, it was so cold, I've actually made my own jamu. Uh, wow, that's impressive. Yeah. And uh, yeah, uh, hopefully you've learned something from Vanessa today. Right, and thanks everyone. And Thank yeah, you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you.